This is Guinevere's main television. It's a smart TV. Um, the TV needs to be switched on at this point here, otherwise it won't work. And you also need to make sure that you have the inverter on so that the Wi-Fi works as it is, it is a smart television. Now, because you're going to be mooring at a different place every night, you will need to tune the TV if you're watching it on Freeview. Um, you just need to follow the controls to um, do auto tuning and it will find the right signal. What we can't guarantee, of course, is that there is a signal where you are moored, um, in which case you will have to watch um, Netflix or Amazon, which are also on here. We do not provide Amazon or Netflix for free, so feel free to use your own accounts to log in. This is your fuel burner. We can provide a fuel burning pack for you if you would like and it will be ready for you when you start your holiday. Um, please let us know if you would like one. It includes matches, fire lighters, kindling, coal and logs. Um, it also includes the cleaning of the fuel burner at the end of your stay. Now to get the fire going, just like a fuel burner at home, you get your TP going with the kindling and your fire lighters, keep the door shut. Once it's got going, you can add your logs and eventually your coal. When you empty your fuel burner, please can you make sure that the embers and the ash inside are completely cold. Um, if it's not, any embers that get on the floor will actually damage the floor. So please make sure that it's completely cold when you empty it. Also, it can get a bit warm, so please don't let small children touch it. I'm now going to show you how to put the sofa bed together. First of all, you need to remove the cushions. And then you simply pull this toggle here and then fold the back down. And there you have your bed. Now the bedding for this bed and also for the other dinette will be stored under here. So now coming to build the dinette for your double bed, what you need to do, we've got the table, you take the table off, two people is easy to do this job, you take one person stands there, one person stands there, and you lift the table off, you take these two poles out, you just literally twist and pull, and you put the poles safely to one side. You then put the table, and it sits on this ledge here, and can you see there's a little nut that sits out there, that nut fits into a corresponding hole here, and the same over there as well. There is another nut. They're fixed, they can't be moved. And basically you put the table so the, the nuts line up with the holes. And then there is a peg, which you will then put in here. And the peg is kept in that cupboard there. So that would be where the peg is kept. And I think you can see it there on the bottom shelf. That is the peg. So that peg, fits in the square here and becomes the bed leg. When you've built the base, what you do is this back piece here comes out and you lay it here on the table. And then in between those two cushions, these ones then form the center parts of the mattress. The only bit of cushion that's not needed for the bed is this one here. So this one you take away because we don't need it. So we just pop that one over there. So these two become the center cushions and that one there becomes the other mattress here. And that is how you build the bed. There are three fire extinguishers on board this boat. One here, one at the entrance to the galley and one at the stern of the boat. There is also a fire blanket, which is positioned in a cupboard above the cooker. In the event of a fire, please call 112, evacuate the boat and call us. If it's only a small fire and you can put it out yourself, please do, but please make sure that you call us. This is your galley. I'm going to show you how to use the dishwasher first of all. Yes, you have a dishwasher on board. Um, now we've stacked it nicely for you here. Now to turn it on, you need a really good thumbprint on the on button. Now it is on. 
You need to select number five, which is total care. It's actually the shortest cycle on this machine, um, a lot shorter than Eco. You also need to make sure that you have the engine on and the inverter on throughout the duration of the cycle. Um, if you don't, then you're going to deplete the batteries, which is very expensive. So please make sure that you leave it on throughout the duration. Can you also make sure that at the end of your stay that there's nothing left in the dishwasher and that all washing up has been done and put away thank you to turn it off it's another good thumbprint and now the dishwasher is off over here we have a cupboard which has your gas isolation valve in now the gas is left on you do not need to touch it except if there is a gas leak if there is a gas leak then you need to shut the valves off in this cupboard there are two of them ventilate the boat do not light any matches turn the gas also supply off at the gas bottle get off the boat and to phone us but otherwise you can just leave it as it is now to light the hob you need it's a self-ignition but you need to make sure that you turn it to halfway and that you hold it down for a few seconds while the gas gets going and then you can let go and you've got use of the hob You've also got an extractor fan, you've got two buttons, one which is a light and one which has got three speeds for the fan, so you can choose the, the level that you have it at. You've got a microwave as well. With all these devices you need to make sure that the inverter's on for the microwave, the dishwasher and the cooker, otherwise nothing will work. Um, here you have a fridge freezer. This runs off of 12 volts, so you do not need to have to worry about the inverter as the fridge freezer will be on regardless throughout the duration of your holiday because obviously we don't want your, uh, your food and your drinks to go warm. You also have a wine rack as well. This is one of the TVs in the bedrooms. Each bedroom has its own television and they're all identical. You need to make sure they're switched on on the plug up here and then you can use them. They're set to free view and we also provide Amazon Fire Sticks as well. If you do use your own Amazon or Netflix account on these Fire Sticks, please can you make sure that you log out when you leave, otherwise the next guest will enjoy your, your, the, the rewards of your account. Um, also, can you make sure that the remotes stay in the bedrooms as they're all programmed into each individual Fire Stick? This is one of three bathrooms on board this boat. The bathrooms in both of the twin bedrooms are identical. This is one of them. The bathroom in the double cabin is slightly different. So I will show you where um, the controls are in that bathroom. This is your shower. Now the water is heated by the engine of the boat. So if you want a nice hot shower, have it at the end of the day. If you like a cold shower, then have it first thing. Now, if you've been cruising all day, the water will get very, very hot. So please make sure that you adjust the water before you get in the shower by using the controls um, over here. Because the um, shower tray sits below the water line, you will also need to use the shower pump, otherwise the water will not drain away. You just literally switch this button here and then you can hear it glugging away and it will suck the water away for you. This is your toilet. Um, each of the three toilets on board this boat all have their own um, tanks underneath. They're not huge, so you need to be sparing with the amount of water that you use. Water is a precious commodity on board a boat, um, so you need to make sure that you flush the toilet only when absolutely necessary. So as we say, if it's yellow, let it mellow. But you've got three controls here. The first one is the eco, which is definitely for a number one. <laughs> a normal flush is for a number two. An oppression hold or a whoosh, as we call it, literally just takes what's in the toilet and washes it away without using any water. Throughout your holiday, if the toilets become full, you will need to do a pump out. Um, we all normally recommend that for holidays of a week, a pump out will have to be done throughout your holiday. You will need to find a lock that has a pump out facility um, and it will, they'll charge you around about £15 for a pump out. The only thing that goes down the toilet is what comes out of you and small amounts of the toilet paper that we provide, which is two ply. If you need to provide your own, please do not use quilted toilet roll as it will block the toilet 
and you will be charged for somebody who has to take the thing apart and get it working again. So please remember, nothing, no sanitary products, no cotton wool, nothing down there apart from what comes out of you and small amounts of non-quilted two-ply toilet paper. The controls for the bathroom in the double bedroom are in a different place from the twin bathrooms. The shower pump is located just underneath here and the toilet controls are right next to it. So in many of the clips so far, we've been talking about the inverter and the inverter has to be on for things to work. An inverter is what converts 12 volts from the batteries to 240 volts so you can have your appliances working. So where is this inverter switch? It is right here. And it's a tiny little switch. And can you see it's currently pressed to on. So the inverter is now on. Now, when you leave the boat, if you're going out shopping, or even if you're just going to bed, this inverter must be turned off. If it's left on, it will deplete the batteries and you'll wake up in the morning with no power. So if you're leaving the boat or when you go to bed, please turn the inverter off. And to turn it off, you simply flip the switch to either the middle setting or charger only. Either of those is fine. And now that means the 240 volts are turned off, but all the 12 volt appliances will still work. You don't need to worry about your fridge and your freezer. So that's the inverter. So this panel here, you don't need to worry too much about this panel. I'm just going to point out very obvious things that you will need, perhaps. This is your central heating. To turn the central heating on, that's for the radiators. You simply turn this that way and you'll hear the heater, which is located in the engine bay, and it will fire up and it'll make a sort of sound as it fires up and then it'll continuously run and then the radiators will start to heat up. So that's your central heating. If you're using the central heating, it's very important that you run it for a minimum of two hours and no longer than five hours. And do not leave the central heating on overnight. And please do not leave the heating on if you leave the boat. Treat the heater like the engine. You wouldn't leave your car engine running and then leave the car. It's the same with the heater. It must turn off. And to turn it off, it's currently in the off position. Okay, you just flick it back there. Okay, so that's the central heating. The other things I'm going to just show you are this quite complicated looking um, switchboard here. Basically, you don't need to touch anything on this because it's all set up. But if something doesn't work, this is your first port of call. So for instance, if the fridge for some reason isn't on, check that nobody's accidentally turned it off. Now the fridge is off. So to make sure these are all in the on. The only two that will be turned off are the headlight, because we're not driving the boat in any tunnels, and the nav lights, because you're not allowed to drive the boat after dark. So all these other switches must be on. So if you can see the red, it means they're on, and you just leave it. You do not need to touch this. Okay, so that's that panel. And then I'm just going to show you some gauges. Now, luckily on this boat, we do have some lovely gauges, but I just want to stress, technology is lovely when it works. And when it doesn't work, then we have problems. So don't assume, okay? Always assume that it works, that's great, but don't rely on it. So we've got our water gauge and our fuel gauge. Now, this is currently showing that the tank is full and the fuel is full. But do remember, gauges aren't always accurate and we recommend every time you do go past a water point that you do fill up with water, okay? Um, if you don't see this gauge rising and you filled up with water and you think, well, hang on a minute, the water's full. Why is this gauge not showing it's full? Don't worry. As long as you know that the water is full, that's fine. Gauges don't always tell the truth. The fuel, it will always go out with a full tank of fuel. You will not be running out of fuel. So don't worry about the fuel. And now these tank, these are for your black tanks. These are basically the toilet waste. Now these gauges will say it's low and it will stay like this for a very long time, just the way the gauges are set. Um, when it suddenly goes, it will suddenly then go on to red. That means you really do need a pump out and it is imminent. Okay, so don't rely on the gauges. Halfway through your holiday, if it's a week's stay, you will need to do a pump out, even if that says it's on low. Because as I said, this gauge will suddenly swing to the full, just the way the gauges are set on boats. So gauges are great when they work, but we never rely on them. 
This is where your gas canisters are kept. If you run out of gas, there is always a full one as a spare. You'll know it's empty because it'll be very light and you'll be able to easily pick it up. First thing you do when changing the bottle is change the valve to closed. Using the spanner, you then release, swap the pipe over to the new bottle, tighten it with the spanner and then open it and you'll have plenty of gas. And now we come to the front locker. So in this locker here, we've got various items that you're going to need for the outside of the boat. So we've got here your mooring pins or stakes and you can see that they've all got an eye on the end. So you've got three mooring stakes and a mallet. Now you need these if you're mooring up and there's nowhere to put a rope. Okay, so there isn't a pollard, there isn't anywhere to tie a rope onto. So if you can see that where you're about to moor up hasn't got anywhere, get these out and ready well before you moor up. So get three pegs, you'll need three of them. Take them out. And what I would do is as the boat gets closer to the shore, it's just gently throw them onto the bank. When you're putting the mooring stakes in, we're going to put the front one in first. And it's going to be 45 degrees to the front of the boat, a bit where that rope is over there. And you're going to take the stick and you're going to hammer it in at an angle so the pointy bit of the stake is pointing towards the boat. We're going to hammer it all the way in so only the eye is showing. When you've got it all the way in, you then take your boat rope already have a shore with your crew member, feed the rope through the eye and then back onto the boat. Remember we always tie our ropes back onto the boat. So that's our mooring stick. So you also need to do the same with the stern rope and if you're mooring the boat overnight or you're going to leave the boat then remember you're going to need your centre rope as well. So you'll need the third stick for that. And again always at an angle and always all the way in so only Now this little tool is your water key. So this bit here goes in the water to unscrew the cap and this one goes in the pump out to unscrew those caps there. And so here is where you put your water. So unscrew that with that little blue triangular key that I showed you and then you put the hose in there and then you fill up the water and you know when it's full because the water will start spouting out of the top and then when it's full just simply make sure the cap is tightened and then that is your water done. I'm not going to cover much about the controls in this video because there is a separate video for how to drive the boat but I just want to point out we've got here what's called a bow thruster and this helps you basically position the front of the boat. To turn it on you have to press this button twice. Once, it beeps, press it again. And then if I want to move the nose that way, no more than three seconds. It's only to move the nose when you're coming out of a mooring or going into a mooring. It will turn itself off automatically after 20 minutes. So you don't need to worry about turning it off. So I'm just going to show you the weed hatch. This is the weed hatch here. Now very occasionally, if you're driving on the river, you might pick something up in the propeller. Now, if you pick anything up in the propeller, the first thing you'll notice is that the steering is really wonky. It really starts to steer quite difficult. So you need to pull over, moor up, turn the engine off, and take the keys out of the ignition. That's the most important thing. There must be no way that engine can restart. When you've done that, open up this, and this is the weed hatch. Now, you've got two T um, levers here. You need to unscrew them, take this T bar off, and then put your hand underneath here, lift out the whole weed hatch. It all comes out in one thing. It's two basically horizontal plates joined by two vertical bars. The whole thing comes out. I can lift it so you'll be able to. And then you will see the propeller. And you'll see also what's wrapped around the propeller. So you need to just get in there. You might need a knife, get one of the serrated edge knife, a steak knife will be fine. And you might need to saw off. Nine times out of 10, it is your own rope that ends up around this propeller. So once you've got off whatever is around that propeller, put everything back exactly the way it came off and make sure that you really tighten this up. 
If you can't get it tight, get the mallet just to tap it. So this must be watertight. And then you're ready to carry on with your journey.